What is a legacy? Is it how something is remembered? How it is appreciated in the years following its debut? Is it an emotional attachment we have towards things that we find moving or important? Is it a permanent impact of the trajectory of history? Regardless, everyone and everything seeks to have a legacy, to be remembered for the successes and have the failures forgotten. We share this common goal, but very, very few ever achieve anything close to it. This makes it all the more impressive when someone or something comes along and stakes their flag in the ground of history, proclaiming their victory and proving to everyone that they are worthy of remembrance. Now, I know what you're thinking. What the hell are you talking about? And that's fair. What I'm getting at is that every once in a while we'll encounter a game that changes everything. It redefines what we consider to be the standard within the industry and helps to move the art form ahead. It moves all of this ahead, not just in the artistic sense, but also can do so in the business sense. In fact, I would argue that the business side of a game's impact is more important in the long run than the way that the game appears to players at launch. In other words, for a game like Battlefront 2, it may be fun to play for some players, but the business impact of all of the bad press and the explosive allegations of pay-to-win and video game gambling had a much more significant impact on gaming as a whole than the gameplay and nice graphics did. Of course, Battlefront 2 is an extreme example, but it serves the point. A game's legacy is not just defined by its gameplay loop or writing. It's how these things intertwine and interact with the rest of the industry that defines what it will be remembered for. Now, of course, you don't get to change the industry with your game unless you do something either very, very right or very, very wrong. In the case of Battlefront 2, it's obvious that they screwed up. However, for many other games, such as The Last of Us, these games can change the way that society as a whole looks at video games. And it's important to note that these things do not just happen in a vacuum. You have to have a great or truly terrible game to begin with in order to influence the industry in such a severe and significant way. All of this brings us to the titular topic of this video, which is to say that one game in particular has influenced the industry in a way that no other game has in recent history. A game that has found its way into over 100 million homes, racked up unbelievable sums of money for its creators, and completely changed the way that we look at gaming as a whole, both as consumers and as developers. It's dark, gritty, and serious, all while maintaining a certain level of levity that makes it truly unique. Of course, I'm talking about Wii Sports. This game defined the late 2000s, and with its intense and highly addicting bowling minigame, made us all lose our collective sh <laughs> Okay, I'm kidding. Of course, I'm actually talking about Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V launched on September 17th of 2013 to a level of hyped anticipation unlike almost anything we'd seen before or that we've seen since. Now, the single player campaign is fantastic and totally unlike any other game I've ever played. It really is phenomenal. In fact, if you'd like to see one of my long form critiques on Grand Theft Auto V, just let me know in a comment down below and subscribe to see it when it comes out. But the single player isn't the focus of this video. Rather, we're going to talk about the online. Grand Theft Auto Online launched two weeks after the base game on October 1st of 2013. Initially, it was marred with all sorts of technical issues, things like crashes, excessive load screens, lag, does any of this sound familiar? However, despite all of these issues, players and reviewers alike agreed that the online mode had a ton of potential. Why did it have potential? One word, dynamism. To really understand this point, let's look at Rockstar's most recent foray into the online space, Red Dead Online. It's no mystery that Red Dead Online has struggled immensely since its launch. Bugs, lack of content, unbalanced economies, you name it, Red Dead Online has it, or perhaps I should say doesn't have it. But believe it or not, these issues, while bad, are not the terminal illness that plagues it. Rather, that all has to do with the setting. You see, Grand Theft Auto Online has almost limitless opportunities and potential for fun. You can race fancy cars, fly planes, go mountain biking, get a tattoo, wreak havoc with a monster truck, design custom races, buy an upscale apartment, skydive, and much, much, much more. Limitless possibilities and endless potential for growth 
and updates. Not to mention, these expandable categories are easily monetized, especially when contrasted with Red Dead Online. Needless to say, it's much easier to sell a $2 skin for a fancy car you can use to race and you can customize to a high level than it is to sell a $2 skin for a horse. I mean, that's literally a meme, horse armor. And this is where Rockstar is screwed with Red Dead Online. It was never going to be as variable or dynamic as Grand Theft Auto Online, and likely never will be. It just doesn't work in a cowboy setting the same way it does in a fictionalized Los Angeles. Now, because of this setting and the vast potential that the game had for growth and improvement, some players stuck with it. And as the months went by, Rockstar added more and more to the game. And before anyone realized it, Grand Theft Auto Online had a massive player base. Then, Rockstar released Grand Theft Auto V on the next generation of consoles and eventually on PCs as well, each release bringing more and more players into the mix. This proved to be a winning strategy because as of early 2019, Grand Theft Auto V had become the single highest grossing entertainment product in history, selling over 100 million copies and grossing over $6 billion in revenue. But what impact did this have on the industry? Surely these things don't happen in a vacuum. Surely other companies noticed Rockstar's success and grew jealous and sought to emulate them. Oh, did they ever. Prior to Grand Theft Auto Online, there were online games and online sandboxes and online microtransactions, but nothing had ever grown to gargantuan size the way that Rockstar's attempt had. Because this was such a revolutionary concept, specifically that there was such a huge number of players willing to play the same game for years and years after release and recurrently spend money on it, major publishers like Ubisoft, Activision, and EA all took notice. They started trying to slip this style of monetization into their games, whether they were Assassin's Creed titles or Battlefront or Call of Duty. And what's truly amazing is that they did this in such a ham-fisted way. These attempts at a quick cash-in weren't even good. They were half-assed micro-purchases that were scattered throughout the entire game. And when players didn't respond to it, they took important content out of the game and made it exclusive to those who forked over some cash. When this stopped working, they nerfed in-game mechanics, making it almost impossible to play the game the way that you could years before without spending extra money on top of the initial $60 investment. Just look at NBA 2K18 as an example. And yes, I know that 2K Sports is a subsidiary of 2K Games, which is a subsidiary of Take-Two Interactive, the same parent company of Rockstar. But this just proves that even Rockstar's parent company was scraping the bottom of the barrel to do that very same thing that they had done with Grand Theft Auto V's online mode. All of this culminated with the release of Battlefront 2, wherein EA stripped core game mechanics to their bare minimum in order to encourage gameplay altering boosts to be purchased from their in-game store with real world money. Players were outraged, news outlets were outraged, YouTubers were outraged, even Disney threw a fit that their Star Wars license was being used in this way. In my estimation, this marked a shift. Companies realized that they would face stark repercussions if they continued in this way, and the majority of them toned down this predatory practice. EA, however, is still learning. But tying all of this back to Grand Theft Auto Online, the game did that which no game had done before, or technically speaking, since. It found a record-breaking audience to play it, and recorded more revenue than any other piece of entertainment in human history. But it didn't end there, and it certainly isn't its legacy. Rather, its legacy is somewhat unfortunate. It ushered in a modern era of microtransactions and an approach towards games as a service and not a product. It inspired, perhaps through no fault of its own, major corporations to start monetizing their products in predatory ways in order to try and milk customers at the same level that Grand Theft Auto V Online has. But they all miss the operative and most important question in all of this. Why? Why were players willing to spend so much money for years and years, all while turning around and praising Rockstar as a developer? Because the game itself was great. If you want to play Grand Theft Auto Online, you can do that for hours and hours, or even days and days on end without the need to pay a dime. The game is so good and fun by itself that players find themselves wanting to buy cosmetics or shark carts just so that they can thank Rockstar. It's the simplest, but apparently the most difficult to grasp takeaway from Grand Theft Auto V. Make a good game and people will buy it. 
make an online game fun, and people will play it. Spoil your players, and they'll spoil you. Regardless, there is one thing that I can say with absolute confidence, and that is that Grand Theft Auto V and Grand Theft Auto Online changed gaming forever. But that's all from me. Thank you for watching Honestly and Truly, it really does mean the world. And as I said earlier in the video, if you're interested in seeing the full-length critique of Grand Theft Auto V, make sure to subscribe and let me know that you'd like to see it in the comment section below. Again, thank you for watching, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video.